So, yeah. so in terms of in terms of capital price, the Pearl Seven obviously issued at par as the spread widens. That capital price falls. What did what did it get down to, and where is it trading at now? Well, Pearl Seven yeah. was well, they're all issued at a hundred dollars. Yeah. It's now trading about ninety six. I believe. Okay. Pearl's Eight issued a hundred dollars uh, at a higher margin. Trading at 105.50, so it's 106. Even. Yeah. So it's I think what it, can you remember what Pearl Seven got to? It's, it's in the low 90s. It doesn't get below 90. Yeah. And I remember all the the um, people writing about the the the, you know, the 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 language they wrote was you know a disaster, and it was that this that and the other. And I was trying to understand if it loses 10% in the same environment where equity markets were being ripped up. It's people looking at the same asset class and applying the same volatility assumptions to it. So yeah. it's a disaster because it's 10% in hybrid, but if that was applied to the equity, you go, well, like, that's just a yeah, it, an opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know my view on, on hybrids. I mean, I think those charts just show that perfectly. It, they're very correlated to the equity component. So as a fixed income asset class, I wouldn't really have banked hybrids in there. I would say absolutely if you want them in there, they do damp down the volatility in terms of the equity. So carve them out of your equity part of the portfolio and try and get that diversity out of your equity portfolio, which is pr probably pretty heavily concentrated on financials anyway, if you've got kind of a, a broad ASX you know, portfolio. And you know, put them in hybrids, but get that diversity in your fixed income portfolio. That's kind of the, but the area But isn't the same thing, isn't that the real challenge though? If you think, maybe if you think about it, that okay, hybrids are an asset class in their own right, Equities are an asset class in their own right, and you just keep playing around with the the level of diversity required. Everything is correlated. So you're about to do a property deal. I'm not saying you are, but let's say you are. That's linked to the banks because they lend to the. Pro it's it, you know the, it, it's very hard. It is to linked get away. And I, I agree if if investors can get it in their psyche that a hybrid is a, a, a kind of a middle asset class, but but Australian investors think hybrids are fixed income. That's the fixed income market that they see on the ASX. That's the one that they that they know. And we all know that it's much broader than that. And we're going to talk about that. Sure. And so you get the diversity and the you know the uh, uncorrelated benefits from other parts of that fixed income. Portfolio. Yeah. No, I, I recognise that. I just think it's part of the challenge is there's just not enough of it. So I agree. Yeah. You know, you guys are doing a good job. Uh, it's still compared to the rest of the world. It's it's not a it's not a massive part of the pie. It's Correct. very hard to get that yeah. pie bigger. And I think that's. The challenge for you know sort of 2017, 2018, 2019. What do you think the driving themes will be for the for in in terms of that origination story in 2017? You mentioned the banks coming back. I recognise that's a thematic that people think about the banks as banks try to become more cautious. But at the same time, you've got the peer-to-peer -peer lending, the the financial disruption. When I look at what's happening in the US. That financial disruption isn't really happening in the way they anticipated. The lenders in the peer-to-peer -peer lending seem to be institutional, you know, it's yep. Jefferies, it's those sort of organisations. And the borrowers seem to be not of the same credit quality as the banks. They've let go, it's, it's like ANZ trying to get into Asia. It's much harder than you think. And I think they let the credit go that they really don't need. It's, it's the wrong credit borrower. Uh, what do you think drives that direction in 2017 in terms of new issuers? How do we get more issuers into the market? I mean, I think it's, you know, it's, we always talk about this and it's, it always seems like the banks are going to pull back in terms of their lending requirements, but you never really see that because you can have the directive coming down, but when it's your relationship with a, a, a client, a corporate, and you've got a loan out to them, then that's just revenue coming in. I think banks are getting a bit smarter in terms of adjusting that revenue that they're getting in on a risk-adjusted basis and return on assets or return on, uh, on, on risk. Yep. And so we're seeing some of those corporates looking to go to an alternative source of funding which we can help them with and you know NAB's got your business as well which you know does that similar sure. area as well uh, also yeah, yeah. in terms of um, the corporates as well that come to us they're looking for longer maturities so you know as you know banks will typically do three years or maybe five years whereas we can do you know five out to seven years maybe even ten yep. years in certain circumstances so that's another uh, in kind of thought process for corporates that they can get um, further term on their lending and also it diversifies their funding source keeps the banks competitive you know yep. so if the bank stops lending which happened during the GFC to a lot of corporates yep you know you've got another source of, of funding which is critical I completely agree because when we did Pete group uh, that was one of the drivers I did the interview with Pete group and the CEO said look I, I love the bank it's all great but I want to have more than one lender to my organization when you go and talk to corporates 
and you ask them to do ASX listed, and it's not just because you're part of a broader team, so it's not just yeah. you do over the counter through the NAD team. Um, what's the tone from those borrowers at the moment? And and point to that fact about what Mark's talking about. People like to have different diversity in the people that lend to them because it de-risks their borrowing profile. No question about it. And as, as we said earlier, you know, I look at corporates for subordinated. Debt. I tend to do everything in the subordinated space, listed or subordinated, be it financials or corporates. So we do talk to a lot of corporates. They will tend to come to market if there is some constraints on bank lending in the subordinated space, or they might have their lending linked to um, how much gearing they've got. If they're, if they're leveraged a little bit high, they might need to do something that's carved out of the, the leverage, so you do it subordinated to the bank lending. Um, that's fine. The other aspect, if they're doing M&A and they, they really want the uh, merger or the acquisition to occur and they don't necessarily want to dilute their equity, which is a key concern for shareholders, yep. they will look to sub-debt. Now, we're, we're going to take a short break because I want to talk a little bit more about this because this is the story of Cube and this is the execution that Cube... Uh, and and it's, it's worthwhile explaining to the, to the viewers who Cube, or who Cube are, what they did and why they did it, because I've been told it's a wrap. So we'll go to our first ad break, and we'll talk to you soon about more on the fixed income space. Talk to you soon. Or shades? How about both? Get two pairs of designer glasses for $199, including a second pair of prescription sunglasses. And if you're with a major health fund, there's no gap. Should have gone to Specsavers. Interest rates are so low, many people are concerned about their retirement. Michael, at COSEC, how can you help investors build their wealth? Well, Nick, it's important to follow a strategy. At COSEC, we follow a top-down investment approach to help us identify those businesses that we believe have the brightest prospects. Lawrence, you're an Oxford scholar and a member of the COSEC investment team. How do I get my timing right when buying stocks? The goal is to get a quality business and to buy it when it's undervalued. And we can use technical indicators to maximise our profits, minimise any losses. Timing is so crucial when it comes to the stock market. Michael, you've recommended some great businesses. How do I move forward? Go to cosec.com.au and register for your free report. When Cosec talks, everyone listens. You're a successful professional. In life, you always strive for the best. So when looking for a serious relationship, why settle for anything less? Get to know someone worth getting to know. Register today at elitesingles.com.au When it comes to cars, everyone thinks they're an expert. But the real experts chose the Hyundai Accent as the best city car in Australia. Right now, you can get the Accent from just $14,990 drive away. We're leaving our generation. To join one, it's moving us forward. Where knowledge isn't limited by time or space. And anyone can change the world from anywhere. So we can keep our big city job without the big city. We're doing things differently, seeing things differently. And we're just getting started. It's time for a new generation. It's time for Gen MBN. There is a place that will get your heart racing and you can reserve your cruise for just one dollar. But it's like no place on earth. News comes at us all day. On air, online, mobile, almost everywhere. On Heads Up, we'll sort out what matters. Talk to the newsmakers and share cut through opinion. But best of all, we'll give you a heads up on what's hitting the front pages tomorrow. Join me, Sky News Live. Welcome back to Your Money, Your Call, Friday night edition. I'm Mark Todd from the NAB. I'm joined by Nick Chapman, who's also from the NAB, and Mark Bailey from FIG. And they're here to answer any of your questions, and I'd love it if you'd call us. one 30 34 35 The email is skynews.com.au. We will take an email in one second. I just wanted to get to this story. Um, and let's give it the condensed version. You did Cube. You uh, asked for 
300 million, you've got 900 million in bids. It's a sub debt at 390 over. Client's very happy. Uh, why did they do it? They did it be really for the reasons we spoke about earlier. There was some key M&A, they were looking at the time purchase, purchasing SCA, but really to also um, develop the Moore Bank intermodal terminal. So that's an import-export hub that they're developing out there at Moore Bank. It's going to take a thousand trucks off the road every day. I think everyone will love it by the time it's happening. And uh, well, it it, it's reached financial close just last week. And it's um, the company is progressing it uh, with a great bunch of uh, management brains out there. So we, we like what they're doing. They've done the deal. You, you have to... You, you I can't They're forget not watching. It. I can't right. forget it. I can't forget it. It's he just, he just had a great experience. He loved it all. <laughs> um, we've got an email from James, and this is where I want to um, bring Mark in because he'll be uh, have a really good insight on this one. Um, this came through the week. Just wondering if you could cover...